Hey everyone, Ryan from Me Bike Escape, and today we're installing this Bolton Electric Bikes 35 amp controller on this Rad Power Bikes Rad Wagon 4. So let's get into it. Before we get into this video, a few housekeeping items. Firstly, if you're planning to purchase from Rad Power Bikes, please consider using the link to the Rad Power Bikes website in the description of this video before making a purchase as that helps support videos like this one. Secondly, a disclaimer. This controller upgrade will absolutely avoid your warranty on your Rad Power Bike. There are also potential risks with your motor. This upgrade is very popular and I haven't seen any examples of this, but you have been warned. Check out the Rad Power Bikes forum at radowners.com to learn more from others who have successfully done this upgrade. Basically, do this upgrade at your own risk. So why the Radwagon 4? I'll be the first one to admit that I was doubtful of the need for the controller upgrade on any Rad model even though it seems like thousands of people have done the same upgrade. We simply just don't need the extra acceleration or extra power as we're cruising at slower speeds these days with our little one. However, my brother saw a need to power up some pretty large hills by his house. Add to that the hefty weight of the Rad Wagon at 76.7 pounds. Add some cargo, maybe your wife or husband, kiddos, or even a load of groceries, and I can see the desire to have a bit more power. The Bolton E-Bikes controller upgrade will set you back $219. It also comes with a color LCD, which is a nice upgrade from the monochrome one that comes stock with the Rad Power Bikes. In a nutshell, this is how it works. Rad Power Bikes uses a 750 watt peak motor with a 22 amp controller. The consensus is that this is actually a 500 watt motor that just peaks at 750 watts, but many of these motors are capable of handling more power. With the new 35 amp controller, you're pushing about double the amount of watts to the same motor, thus drastically changing its performance. You'll see this in an upcoming video, so be oh. sure to subscribe and ding the bell so you'll be notified. Wow. With that, let's get into the install of the Bolton Electric Bikes controller. Let's go through our controller replacement here. So um, just real quickly, just go over a few things that we're gonna be touching on the bike here. Um, so first off, right, this is the stock controller that's on there right now. So underneath there's just um, four uh, screws there that you can just use the Allen wrench provided to remove. So um, really easy to take this thing apart. So, or take it, take it off rather. I'm gonna leave, um, the, the way that it's mounted here is actually part of the controller. So this isn't a, uh, a separate mounting bracket or anything like that. This is all made to be one unit. If you take off the other Phillips screws under here, you'll actually expose the electronics and stuff. So, so it's just these four Allen wrenches here to take this off. And then I did, um, went ahead and just added some labels so that um, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with the old controller. Um, most likely I'm gonna keep it for a spare, but we'll see. Um, but I figured it would be good to kind of label all these wires so that I can use it again. So um, in the rear here, we have this wire here, which is uh, for the brake light. So we have one here, that one goes into the fender. We have another wire here. This one goes directly to the motor, right? So it's the, the big guy here. And then we'll slide over to the front. So two wires in the back, three wires in the front here. The one closest to us here actually goes to the battery. Um, so that's a pretty solid one there. goes to where the battery mounts. Um, the next one here is actually one, um, the only one that actually, um, besides the one that goes through the fender, um, this one actually runs through the main tube of the bike, and this goes up through the display. So this one goes all the way through, goes through like this opening here, goes all the way up here, and then it actually comes up right through here, and then... Um, just from there, right, it just kind of gets split across, you know, all the different electronics that are at the top here. So you've got like brake cutoff, you've got display. So the new display will go here, will connect to this cable here, and then it comes with another, um, you know, paths and uh, button configuration here that will mount to the handlebar. The nice thing about this controller swap, um, hopefully is what we're thinking, is we won't have to route any of the wires through the tube because it's actually just gonna connect right here. Um, so it should make all the wires that we have to unplug and plug should all be right in this area. Um, so hopefully this is a, a rather quick install. 
So after we're done with the display, and we talked about that wire that routes through, then the third wire out of the three that are coming out the front here is actually this one here that's kind of tangled. It's kind of, you know, in this little slot here. This one actually goes to the paths, right? The, uh, the, the ring down there that controls, um, you know, what the paths sensing is for uh, your pedal assist, the cadence sensor. Okay, so here is what we have rigged up, and this is by no means permanent. What we wanted to do is get it steady enough so that we could test to make sure all the functions of the new controller and the LCD work before we affix anything permanently. So what we decided to do here was put a board on top of where the old controller was. We have these two screws securing it to the front, and you can see two zip ties here, again, temporary, because we do have the controller mounted underneath the board. And the reason that we have to do that is to get as much length for the power to the motor, as well as length to the pedal assist sensor right here. So those two cables are kind of fighting each other when you're trying to make this work. So controller mounted down, and then you do have the motor power that will come back around and it will make it to power the rear motor. And then the pedal assist sensor is a little bit stretched compared to how it is on the stock bike. So if you are looking to do this modification, you do need to install this with all the cords pointing towards the front of the bike. So now that we have this set up, we'll plug everything in and we're going to install the LCD screen. Installing the LCD screen is probably the easiest part of the new controller upgrade. Just unscrew the existing cable and take off the old LCD. Attach the new LCD screen to the new mount that is provided before placing it on the bike. Just be careful because the mount is made of plastic. You definitely don't want to be breaking that. After the LCD screen is hooked up, connect the cables at the controller. This is pretty self-explanatory and I have the cables labeled here. But one thing to note is the motor power cable needs to be about an eighth turn offset from the arrows. This is noted in the documentation as well from Bolton eBikes. Okay, so we're just about ready to take the Radwagon 4 with the updated controller out for a test ride, but I wanted to give you a close up of the cables. Keep in mind, some of these are just temporarily zip tied in place because we are going to paint this board and clean up some other things. So everything will be disassembled again, but here's that motor cable. You can see that we were able to make it work. The connection for the rear light. This is the one that has quite a bit of slack, so we kind of wrapped it around the controller temporarily. And you can see there is some extra slack with a couple of the other cables as well, so we'll clean that up definitely before we complete this project. All right, the moment of truth. Install the battery and hope for the best. Ours powered on with no issues, but don't take it out for a test ride yet. Keep in mind you will want to go through and set the advanced settings in the display. Suggested settings are provided by Bolton eBikes and they also have a video that explains each setting. In an upcoming video, I can share the settings that we went with. Speaking of upcoming videos, stay tuned for the performance test of the souped up Radwagon. We put it to the test against an Aerial Rider dual motor D-Class. I know a drag race of the minivan of e-bikes doesn't sound exciting, but the performance of this upgrade kit exceeded even my high expectations. Let me know in the comments if you've done or are considering this upgrade. Thanks for watching as always, and we'll see you in the next one.